Alright, good evening. Um, hope you're all well. Hope you can all hear me. I'm just inviting some people to this broadcast. Um, tonight we've got uh, Karina Stringer. She is a good friend of mine. And she's going to be here. Well, she basically created the name Wings for Success. Now, she does the Facebook Lives as, as well, promoting her own business, and she'd be here to tell her story, how she went from very little to becoming one of the most successful successful businesswomen. For, uh, yeah. So, I'm just inviting some people, guys. Um... Just trying to think. Karina, it won't let me bring you live again. Uh, you've no camera next to you. Uh, all, all only because I can see at the top. Uh, I can't see a camera next to you. So that's that's that is a shame. It is. It is. So obviously plan B will be to bring you on a video call again. And we can speak that way. Because that's how my lives have been lately, guys. Where I couldn't, I'm unable to bring them live. And I ended up having them on the video call. So that is a shame. Uh, just nearly there. Get in there now. Do ten more. Right, there you go. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm unable to bring you live, Karina, I'm afraid. Uh, which is a shame. It is, it is a shame. So what I'm going to have to do, guys, is I'm going to have to bring her on a video call. I, I haven't even got the op the options been removed to bring her live as well. So that is a shame. So what I'll do, Karina... Is I will bring you, I'll turn my notifications down, and I will ring you uh, on a video call, and we can talk that way, if that's okay. Right, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it this way. But please share this, guys. Please share this. I'm gonna have to do it this way. I am. I'm gonna have to do it this way. I'm gonna have to do it this way. I am. Okay. That is such a shame. It really is. That's all right. No worries. I couldn't add you on there either. Facebook at playing the games again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we're here to talk of how you became one of the twelve to become a businesswoman. Um, tell us what the 12 was. Um, well, the 12 was 12 people that came together for, um, a organisation for Bradley Chapman, um, which I came into it very late, actually. There was a lot of people already coming into it, um, and I came into it when we had the event, the big event in London. Yeah. Um. You've disappeared. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm here. I'm just inviting some people. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I came into it quite late, really. There was a lot of people already come in, um, and I think there was there ended up being more than twelve in in the finish. Wow. Um. But yeah, yeah, we went to we went to the event in London. Um, a lot of speakers that day. Unfortunately, a lot of speakers didn't get to speak. Um, but there was a lot of lot of speakers at all different levels speaking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I wasn't. I 
came into it very late. I didn't really get much from it or do much with it. Um, I think it all kind of ended then. Yeah. Pretty much straight up. <laughs> yeah, all, all went all way, didn't we? You all went yes. your own way, sure. We kind of went up and did our own thing, and, which was good in a way because it gave us a bit of exposure and we kind of all went off and did our own thing. And yeah. We went in different directions. Um, and we all got something out of it, which is the main thing. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, yeah, obviously, you host the name Wings for Success. Um, yes. Where did you get that name from? Well, I used to be cabin crew. Right. Um, and I worked in travel for, all in all, I worked in travel for about 15 years. Um, and I decided that doing, working in travel is not a nine to five job anyway. So I'm used to doing the, the crazy hours. But we decided then to start, I started a cleaning company. Um, and then me and my partner then decided to join venture together after many failed businesses from my part and from his. Um, and then we had cleaning and construction as well. Um, and from there we decided to go into property. So it was from Wings to success, but we called it Wings of Success. Brilliant. Um, and that's also what my book is going to be based around as well, which is going to be called Wings of Destiny. Oh, wow. Um, I'm halfway through. Um, I'd finished it, but I was kind of procrastinating. I did the whole add words, take words out. <laughs> so I've been doing that for a long time, but I've decided now I need to get somebody... Uh, maybe to ghost write it. I've got all the content written down. It's just, it needs to be written in a way that people can understand it, not just my waffle. <laughs> <You're> like... <laughs> we all waffle from time to time. <laughs> but other, yeah, other than that property, um, the business, obviously I've seen some lives on it. Um, let's promote it. Let's promote this business. Right. The property business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's called it's called Jean Properties. Um, the reason we came up with that name is because me and my partner are we're running this business together, um, and in our life, his nan and my nan have been like parents to us, right. been like our mothers, um, and they're both called Jean. So it was just a no-brainer, really, that when we were thinking of company names, um, we thought Jean Properties, and it just sounded good, and, you know, Brilliant. we just decided that that was what we are going to call it. Um, and the reason why we decided to go into property is because we've worked in construction and cleaning, and, you know, it was a good next step to go alongside the business that we already have. Yeah. Um, but... As well, we've had a lot of problems with, you know, our own properties and how hard it is for people now to find properties to get on the property ladder. Um, so we wanted to help those people, not those people that are can easily pass a pass a credit referencing check, can easily, you know, get a deposit just like that and just put money down and and people that have got pets. It's hard for people to get to rent when they've got pets yeah. um, or have be or on benefits. So our plan is to work with the councils, local councils, um, to find affordable accommodation for people to get back on the property ladder and to, to have a house that they call home. Brilliant. Um, because it is so hard for people to get on the property ladder. Um, we were just having a conversation. As you can see, I'm not not at my best because I've just come back from swimming. Um, but I was just talking to my partner and I was just saying that, you know, I'd rather have 20, 30 properties that we earn a small amount of income on them and people are finding their feet again, finding their, their forever home or at least their home to, to get to the next yeah. step of their forever home. 
so they can bring their pets with them. They don't have to give up their pets to, to, to move. I'd rather have 20, 30 of those than have, you know, really fancy properties where people come in and, you know, they've passed their credit references and, you know, they're the, the perfect tenant. But then these days, who is the perfect tenant? There's no such, thi There's no such thing as a word perfect. Them. There's no such thing as a word perfect. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think a lot of agents, they are looking for the perfect tenant. Agreed. Um, and I had a conversation with an agent a couple of weeks ago, and I said, well, you know, you could have you could have a, a doctor and a lawyer coming in, but who's to say that they're not going to have a find that they've got a medical condition and they can no longer work? They might be the main, the main breadwinner. Um, who's to say, you know, that they're not going to be made redundant? Um, so I don't a reference a check a, a credit check is all well and good, but sometimes it's not worth the paper that's written on. Exactly, um, I totally agree. So we're just, we, you know, we we want to find the solution for property and for people that need decent, nice property, but you know, need a bit of help, need a little bit of help on along the way. And actually, when we moved house, we had problems with our landlady. And when we moved house, we've got two cats. And it was very hard to find somewhere that would allow pets. Yeah. Um, so we ended up moving back in with family for six months. Because my cats are my babies. Of I've course. Had them, I've had them for years. And, you know, you wouldn't expect a baby. You've got a got to give your baby up to move into this property so why would you with your with your pets exactly you know, they are like family they are and if, they are. if your pets are not like family you shouldn't have pets in my opinion so <laughs> <laughs> oh here we go here we go <laughs> but yeah no i see where you're coming from i do i see where you're coming from but other than that yeah because obviously the homeless percentage has gone up uh, massively it has, yes. And I actually, I had a conversation with a lady from the council today. Um, the manager's calling me back tomorrow. We're going to work closely with them and source properties. Um, and they work with us. They do the referencing and everything. And then we obviously do our bit to get them into a property. And so I'm looking forward to that. I like, um, you yeah. know, we've, we've got our first HMO. We got that. We're going to get the keys on Saturday. Brilliant. Um, but that's a very high-end property. I'm more excited about working with council and, and doing that side of the business. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be global, isn't it? You're going to be all over? Or is it just going to be in your area? It's only going to be in our area. Only in yeah. Essex. Damn. Get to Lancashire. Yeah. Get to Lancashire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We 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 can sort something out with that. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. But obviously, yeah, nobody seems to be watching them unless they are. But Facebook doesn't want them me to know that they're watching. I don't know. But other than that, yeah, because um, I know how it feels to be homeless myself. Um, I was sleeping on the streets just a few weeks ago, uh, just for the night, and no. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I know kids are out there as well. Yes, yeah. I do volunteer for a homeless um, shelter and they're having a lot of problems with churches not being open over the, over the Christmas period. Yeah. Um, so they are looking to source properties, even commercial properties, you know, like warehouses and things where they can convert it. Um, it's better than nothing. Of course. Um but, you know, there's a problem. There's not enough help for homeless people. And the thing is, they could save so many people that are on the border of, to, of being homeless. But the councils, some of the councils just don't want to know. No, they don't. Um, so when I got a call from this lady, I was really pleased that they were actually doing something about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Cause obviously, um, when we were at last week or a few days ago, uh, no, it was it was last week, um, in Bolton there was this a block of flats that was set on fire, and it all burnt down, 
and wow. luckily all the all the kids got out, all of them. Yeah. But obviously two ended up injured, uh, badly burnt. But still, though, it's a minute later there could have been a death. But even then, yeah. even then, the community in Bolton, how they come together, like the football club, the university, the Premier Inn, all putting these kids up for free, offering food, uh -huh. clothes, water. Yeah. It's fantastic. It really is. But it's just a shame that this, when things like this happen, the community and everybody comes together, but why do they not come together before these things happen? You know, they're like they say, they see people on the streets, they see people struggling, but they don't, unless there's a big disaster that happens, they just go about with their daily business. And Maybe because there's obviously all these big ego people going around saying, oh, they're not homeless, they're just beggars and stuff like that. And the, when they go around, they've probably just seen them as beggar. But not really knowing that they are really, really homeless. Yeah, it is a hard one because I spoke to a lady in the bank in London. It was in central London. And she said that there was a beggar that sits outside um, and collects money. And she said sometimes he can bring up to a thousand pounds in coins into the bank and changes it up. And he's not even homeless, he's got somewhere to live. And it's just a shame that people like that ruin it for the people that are genuine and yeah. genuinely need help yeah see i've seen um i see a guy that's outside our local supermarkets um and i see him every single day and um he's not pets or anything like that but the other morning i actually seen him coming out of the house with change of clothing it's like, oh, really? yeah, it, it's like that just ruins it for people. And and he gets like free passes, free coffee and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it boils your skin, it is, doesn't it? It is a hard one, isn't it? Because yeah. you don't really want to be walking past people that genuinely need it. But then you think, where is that money going? Um, well, only last, only, um, when was it, Sunday? I came back from London. And I'd gone into McDonald's because I was obviously coming back late. Um, and I had extra food. And I saw somebody on the train station and I gave them food. Um, but it's happened before where you've seen, you've given them food. And they're like, I don't want food, I want money. Or they've just thrown the food. And you think, well, if you were really desperate, you'd eat the food. You'd have yeah. the food. Um, but you just sometimes you do wonder what people why people would, would do that, but exactly. I suppose when you're desperate, exactly. um, it is. people do it. See, obviously, like, um, when I was, uh, I didn't even sleep on the street, I left, um, which I'm glad I'm back now, but when I left, um, I didn't sleep. I was on a rough concrete floor, and I was genuinely homeless, and I just, I just, I actually cried. Mm. I cried. And um, when I come back, five hours sleep in three days. That That's just not good enough for me. It's not. Yeah. It's not. So it, it does. It upsets. It is. It's, yeah, you, you definitely feel it. We um, When we started volunteering for the homeless um, place, it's in South End. It's called One Love. So if anybody does watch this on the replay, then definitely go onto the group and see the good work that they do. Um, but the first time I went to see it, um, it was freezing cold. It was just before Christmas, a couple of years ago. And we was walking around the um, around the council offices because it was behind, it's behind the police station where the council offices in yeah. South End are talking about. And we walked around the council offices and I was freezing cold and we were walking back to the car. And I just stopped, and I remember thinking, I am so cold, cold to the bone, and I've only been out here a couple of hours. And I said to Peter, my partner, that, you know, we're going home now. I'm going to get back in this car and put the heating on. And these people are going to stay here until the morning, maybe get a hot cup of coffee in the morning, 
if they're lucky. Yeah. And it really, it really upset me. I couldn't drive home because I was like, I was so upset. Um, but there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can physically do oh, no. at that point to help every single person. And it really is heart wrenching when you, when you're in that situation, and you really feel it. Um, but you know what they did a couple of weeks ago. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be there. But they actually, the volunteers went out on the street and they slept on the street to actually experience what it was like as a homeless person. Yeah. Um, and it's scary. It is. It's scary. It's scary for the women. It's and it's just as scary for the men. Of course, of course. The, there does need to be more help out there. They really do, and. The police should be ashamed of themselves because they've obviously come out and said that any any homeless people and they find they're going to get charged a hundred pounds. Like, where are they going to get that hundred pounds from? Exactly. See, homeless people they actually prefer to be locked up because end of the day they're getting free food and they've got a roof over their head. Yeah. That's why they turn to crime. Oh yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. it's just... But what we found, what we found when we were volunteering is that they don't like to be in the homeless, like the hostels. Yeah. Because they have, there's a lot of conflict um, and a lot of fights break out. Sometimes they would rather be on the streets because they've got their group of people, they've got their area and they, they know their area and they're comfortable with their area. But not everybody's got a group, like, though, have they? Chat. Not everybody's got a not group. Everybody, not everybody. Some people, they like to be on their own. Um, they feel safe. They have an area, and they like to be on their own, and they don't like change. No. And they can't trust other people. If they've come from an abusive past or, you know, had a soul in their past, they cannot trust anybody else, and they'd rather just be on their own in their own area that they've found. Yeah. Um, and they feel safe. But... They're not, they're not safe. That's, that's the problem. They're not safe. Well, who is? Who is safe? People out the street or people inside? Nobody's safe. Nobody. No. Nobody. No. And, and this is why people need to take a stand and support each other. But egos get in the way, don't they? Egos. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, well... Somebody called Hannah Davis has just put here. I don't know who she is. Okay. Hi, Hannah. I don't know if she knows you or anything. She's not on my friends list. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big for Facebook, but you're, this is public, isn't it? Yes. So a lot of people can join in. Yeah, but other than that, they saw... HMOs that they want to get rid of, um, and just get in contact. Jean Properties Limited... Uh, .co.uk is our website, or you can message me on Facebook. Karina Stringer. She's tagged in this Karina. post. So anyway, I will um, turn this live off now. Uh, please share this.